Hi everyone. Hello everyone. I'm Karthik, and in this video, we are going to create this Houdini project. And as you can see, there are a couple of things that we have to do in this project. Initially, there's a trunk here that is animating, and then suddenly it turns into a balloon. It starts inflating. Then we have a couple of cloth pieces here which are interacting with the trunk geometry, and we also have a couple of leaves. which are attached to this trunk geometry and as the trunk turns into a balloon as it inflates these leaves also gets detached so this is our project and this is what we have to do so let's get started so the first thing that i'm going to do is i will create a geometry object geometry network and i'll call it get trunk okay you can color it as well and we'll dive inside and i'll create a alembic node here so that we can call our geometry in and i'll call the wooden logs in wooden logs in and we have our logs here i'll just reset the viewport okay so we have our three logs here and we will be using just one of them i got this log geometry from polyheaven.com I provide a link in the project file, and we will just be using this middle geometry, the middle log here. So let's get started. And what I'll do is first I'll do unpack. I'll unpack this geometry, and I'll transfer the path attribute. Second thing, I'll use a convert node and convert all these geometry to polygon, just to make sure that everything here we have, just to make sure that everything we have here is a polygon. Then I'll use a attribute rename node. to convert that path attribute that we have transferred to name attribute okay because in houdini name attribute is used in a lot of places so that's why i converted the path attribute to name attribute after this i'll be using a blast node because i want to delete both of these logs i want to delete them and i want to keep this one so i'll select this one and i'll change this to delete non selected and we have our log i'll use a null node here and call it out out trunk so we have our trunk geometry in and now we can create our simulation so let's create another geometry network i'll call it sim and i'll change the color as well inside i'll use a object merge node and i'll call the trunk in this geometry network now that we have our trunk what i want is i want to move this in a positive z direction so i'll use a transform node and i'll transform this in the positive z direction so maybe 0. Five three is zero point five three is nice. After this, what I want is I'll remesh this. As you can see, our geometry initially has a lot less points here. We want more geometry for our vellum simulation. So I'll use a remesh node and I'll change the target size to zero point zero zero two five. This way, we will have a lot of lot more geometry, lot more triangles, lot more points here for our vellum simulation. After this, I am going to use a normal node because I want to give normal to our points here. And if we check it here, yes, we have a lot of all of our we have a lot of points here, and all of them have normals. Okay, so this is great. Now, what I want for this geometry is I want to create a mask attribute, and this mask attribute will go from uh, this center of the world. for and it will go along the geometry towards the positive z direction so it will be running like this okay uh, from 0 to 1 and with the help of this mask attribute we will be twisting this geometry and we will also use that mask attribute in our vellum simulation as a switch because as you can see in our preview the geometry the trunk geometry initially is static it is just animating and then suddenly it turns into a balloon it starts inflating and i am doing that with the help of mask attribute okay 
So that is what we are going to use that mask attribute. So to create that, I'll be using a attribute wrangle and the attribute wrangle node. What I will do is I will create a vector called trunk. You can name it whatever you want. And I'll be using a function called relative point B box. And this will be running on our geometry with the help of our point position, uh, point at, uh, position attribute. Okay, so we have a trunk attribute. Uh, we have a trunk variable here, and this is equal to the relative point B box. Okay, and uh, what this is basically doing is we have a lot of points here, and all these points are getting a value with respect to the bounding box of this geometry. Okay, so what this basically means is that the points which are closer to the center of the world here in our with respect to our z direction the point which are closer to our center of the world have a value of zero and this value runs along this geometry and the points which are far away from the rest of the world uh, from the center of the world here it will have a value of one so if i if we visualize this i just create another float variable called mask and it will be equal to the z vector of trunk and i'll create a mask attribute which will be equal to our mask variable. Now, if I visualize this mask attribute, you can see the points which are closer to the center of the world have a value of zero. And this mask attribute is running along our geometry. And here we have a, a value of one. So it is running from zero to one. What I want now, I want to play with this value and I want to create an offset. So I want to offset this value, this mask attribute value. Okay. So I'll create, a, I'll write mask and I'll add a channel float. I'll call this offset and I'll just create this spare parameter here. This is offset. And when we are adding this zero to our mask, nothing is changing. But as I add one, when I increase this offset to one, you can see that everything is positive now. Uh, one is added to everything. So the initial points which had a value of zero, they are added one. So here we have one and the points which had a value of one here are also added one. So it is two here. I can show it to you. I can show it to you. When I visualize as a visualize is as a marker, you can see the point here, which should have been, if I just Turn this off, you can see it is zero. And when we apply the offset, it is one. And similarly, the point here in the end, if I create a comment here, if I turn this off, you can see it is initially one as the mask value was, mask value was running from zero to one. And when I add the offset, it is it becomes two, okay? So now it is running from one to two when I add the offset one, I'll play with this offset value as well. Come to edit parameter interface, come to offset and change the range from zero to one to minus one to one. So now range is minus one to one. Okay. Now, when I add the offset value minus one, and when I see the point, you can see that initially, if I remove this, offset value, you can see it was zero. And when we add minus one, it becomes minus one. And similarly here as well, if I remove this mask of the, this offset value, it was initially one. And when I add minus one, if I add the offset here, it becomes zero. So this mask value is being controlled by this offset which is running from minus one to one okay like this if i clamp this mask i'll use a clamp function i'll clamp mask from zero to one then what we will get is i'll just visualize this as a color ramd attribute okay now when we play with the offset value, if I add minus one here, the whole 
geometry the points all of all of the points have a value of minus one have a mask value of minus one and when i increase the offset here we can see it is slowly turning to white which means all the points now have a value of one so these values for all these points the mask attribute value for all these points is running from minus one uh, from zero to one okay this is zero initially and i when I add it, it becomes one. So what I'm going to do is I'll be using this mask attribute later in our simulation uh, to function as a switch, but I'll create another copy of this and I'll add it here before our mask. I'll just name it mask attrib and we are going to create another attribute here called twist. So I'll just call it twist attribute. I'll change the last line here from twist to f at the rate is equal to twist so twist is equal to mask so now we have two attributes one is called twist and one is called mask and both of them are functioning similarly